Can y'all hear me? Okay, I don't know. Oh, my mic is in on. I didn't do my mic check. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Okay. I don't know. Oh, my mic is in on. Yeah. Hold on. Just I didn't do my second. mic check. Oh. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. So let's get this thing started. Thank y'all. Look, see, that's what happens when you're rushing and you're doing things. Thank you. Thank you, Benita. Thank y'all. Okay. Good. Now y'all can hear me. All right. All right, let's get this thing started. All right, so we're talking about, um, hello everyone in the chat. Let me say hello to y'all first of all. We're talking about narcissists. Um, we're just gonna hit on the proposal from, um, I think it's Bishop uh, Noel Jones, not so much on him, but on the proposal and the forever supply, all right? And the scripture is 2 Timothy 3 and 6, all right? They are the kind that who worm uh, into households and take captive uh, vulnerable uh, women who are weighed down with sins and led astray, all right, by various passions who are always learning, but never uh, coming into the knowledge of truth. All right. So, and then also, y'all, this is gonna be a different. This is, this is not an exhortation. This is a this is a learning conversation. All right, especially for my sisters. All right, brothers too, but especially for my sisters, it's just a learning conversation. All right. So, if this is your first time here, I am Shannon Savoy, certified life coach, speaker, advocate, and sur survivor of narcissist abuse. I'm the CEO of Narc Free Living, and here we speak on narcissist abuse. Uh, spiritual warfare from a biblical perspective. All right. I help empower others to navigate their way out of abusive, dysfunctional situations and relationships according to practical strategies and God's word. So we are truly breaking the chains of narcissist abuse. And we do that through awareness, right? So if this is your first time here, welcome. If you're part of the Chain Breaker VIP and the Chain Breaker family, welcome. So uh, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button. My husband is in the chat. I know he's at work. All right. I know he's at uh, work, but he's in here. Thank you, Alan B., our other moderator. All right. And then before I get started, I wanted to uh, invite you, uh, sisters, all right, to... Uh, birthday uh, brunch blessings and doing no contact like a boss. Thank you to those who have signed up. All right. We're going to be uh, doing, uh, we're going to have some worksheets, uh, a presentation, but it's going to be a celebration. All right. Um, just a celebration to see if you're no contact, if you're getting ready to go no contact, whatever your situation is. All right. We're just checking in. We're coming together uh, uh, to celebrate. It is uh, my birthday is next week, but it's really not even so much about that. It's just a celebration of life. All right. Just a celebration of 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 Jesus, of Christ, of being of God, you know, uh, setting us free. That's really what it's, uh, you know, celebrating. So you'll see that you all, you, all, you know, if you follow me long enough, you'll notice that even if I talk about narcissists, even if I say Noel Jones, it's not even so much about him because I have to be very careful. All right. We, I have to be very careful on, on what I speak and how I say it. All right. I never want God to take his anointing off of me. And then even in the body, there's a way. Yeah. You won't ever catch me up here uh, speaking, you know, just um haphazardly about someone you know you get what i'm saying so even in the body we have to be careful uh on how we speak on things but there is there is a uh a type of um mentality that we have in the church and i hate it in the four wall church and i hate it all right let me put my disclaimer out here first all right these things are allegedly some of these things are allegedly all right and i don't diagnose all right but i do discern god does give us discernment he does give us common sense and just because we walk into a church just because we walk into a building doesn't mean we can't speak on things doesn't mean that um that uh you know it doesn't mean that we can't speak on these things. All right. So this is a respectful conversation, one that I approach with love and compassion. But there are some cautionary tales here. All right. So I don't know him. I only saw him. I'm going to play a couple of videos. So stick with me. All right. I don't know him. I just saw uh, some of his fruits from uh, being on the uh, Preachers of LA years ago when that came out. I think it was like 2013. I saw the proposal. And honestly, when I saw the proposal, someone in the buttermilk ain't clean. Something ain't right about that proposal. All right. And and not to say that we will always get it right, but we, we got to be able to call a thing a thing. And we just can't do that in the body. 
All right. So pe my focus is not on him, but the proposal uh, is it's on the 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 um the way it was done all right the things that were said all right and if like i said if you stay here long enough you'll learn that my focus really is not on narcissism it's not on sensationalism but uh they are who they are but we need to be able to recognize when we are being hoodwinked led astray and bamboozled in and out of the church all right jesus and his disciples spoke on these things but somehow in the church we believe that we should never address things the world will try to muzzle you i put on my instagram post and this girl was like oh you shouldn't speak on noel jones girl if you don't get your see i ain't prayed i prayed earlier but if you don't get yourself off my page don't ever don't ever fix your lips on my platform to tell me what i should not don't ever fix your raggedy dusty lips to 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 formulate a sentence to tell me what i should and should not speak on i get my more marching orders from the most high all right i will not be muzzled i will not be controlled i will not i will not so don't ever fix your keyboard your fingers all right because you won't say it to my face anyway you know what i mean my number is all on the website my email address is all on the website but don't be leaving no raggedy dusty comment do you hear me because all it's gonna do is get deleted but don't ever fix your keyboard warrior fingers to try to tell me what i should and should not talk about because one thing about it and two things for sure i'm gonna do what my father has told me to do it in a tasteful way it won't be disgraceful it will be done and excellence in all that i do so if you ever think that i'm going to sit up here and talk about somebody uh, besides you keyboard warriors a, a man a woman of god in a disrespectful manner i won't do that to you so as long as you come at me right won't start none won't be none do you understand that i don't i mind the business that pays me i don't ever it is a, such a sense of entitlement in this in this world that we live in i never go on anybody else's platform telling them my opinion and what they should and should not do but i will say it on my do you hear me hallelujah but we live in such a world where people because they can sit behind a computer and they feel so emboldened they feel so emboldened and they be the biggest cowards in real life don't you understand that you keyboard coward coward warrior that's what you are that's what you are all right but we live in a world where people will try to muzzle you you can't speak on things only god can judge me even the pastors can't speak on sin the members can't speak on sin no one can speak on anything and people just continue to do as thou wills all right we live in a society even in the four wall church they want to coddle, pretend, sweep things under the rug, turn a blind eye, hush your mouth, see no evil, hear no evil, say no evil, and you are going to be judged for enabling. All right. So I repent for enabling people. I repent for not speaking up. I repent against that Ahab spirit, uh, baby girl. Baby girl was in my comments. You got the right one today. You got the right one, baby. Do you understand me? First Thessalonians 5 and 22 says, abstain from all appearance as evil and the very god of peace sanctify you holy and i pray your i pray god your whole spirit and your soul and your body be preserved blameless into the coming of our lord jesus christ faithful is he that called you and who will also do it so we are to abstain from the very appearance as evil that's why a lot of times i don't speak to men a lot of times all right and if i do my husband knows about it do you understand me because i try to abstain i'm not perfect no nobody's perfect bishop no nobody is perfect. none of us are perfect but that is not an excuse all right that is not an excuse we can't keep using that all right we can't keep using that all right but the church has this shut your mouth slave mentality when you speak up against foolishness and fakery do you hear me you shouldn't speak on this i don't speak on unbelievers too much do you understand me i speak to the ecclesia this is why spiritual abuse is so rampant in the four-wall church and you know what it's typically women 
Women are some of the most biggest enablers you will ever see. And it's the same when a, when a child gets molested, they will say nothing, they will cover it up. It's the same men and women that will see wrong and say nothing, all right? All right, this is the, the, main, the mentality that has overtaken the world and has overtaken the four wall church. All right, so you weak, docile, comforting, enabling, narc sympathizers can get off my page and off my channel. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Do you hear me? Goodbye. Goodbye. You are the same people that see things and say nothing. And you are the reason why the four wall church is in the state that it is in. So if you have nothing to say about fornication, <laughs> if you have nothing to say about idolatry, if you have nothing to say about sin, all right, continue to say nothing when I speak on it. Do you hear me? These are the same people that say nothing, all right, but have so much to say about people when they call it out. You are the problem, not me. Do you hear me? These are the same people that cover up and conceal abuse in the church. They love God more than they, they love man. They love men more than they love God and righteousness. So let that sizzle in your spirit. We have gotten to such a state that when we speak up for righteousness and, and, uh, and, and are convicted, all right, uh, people are, are will point the finger more at the one that is calling it out more than the person who is doing the sin. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. All right. People just can't call a thing a thing. All right. The four wall church and the, and the true ecclesia that is it's a different breed. It's a different breed. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. Do you hear me? But they defend like no other. They defend fakery and foolishness like no other. And you cannot tell them anything. But one thing about it, you don't control me. You don't come on this platform telling me what and what not to speak on. That is a real sense of entitlement. Do you hear me? All right. Do you hear me? What business of mine is it to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? Did I just say that the other day? Didn't I, didn't I just say that? So they'll defend all kinds of sinful behavior, but it's really projection because they're doing it too. So when you are doing it, you want to remain hidden, all right? And you'll cover that thing up, but we should correct in love. All right, God disciplines those he loves us. We correct because we love, we speak out on it because I love you enough to tell you the truth. I'd rather I say something, I'd rather you say something to me than to get disciplined by God, all right? But if it brings repentance and correction, right, A.C., judgment begins at the house. Where did we, where did we, only God, come? they start listening to Tupac. Only God can judge me. And they took that thing to another level. So why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about this? All right, because it needs to be talked about. If the preachers are doing it, if the world thinks the church is a mockery, mockery of relationships, it's a mockery of the word, all right? And people, the world cannot take church people seriously, all right? So this video, this message may save somebody some time. People spend years when they years in a relationship and, and uh, that is going nowhere, all right? People spend years in a relationship that is going nowhere when they could be kingdom building with their kingdom spouse. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. And everybody's not going to get a ring after 28 years. Everybody ain't going to get a ring. So this is not to bash, not to gossip. All right. But we don't get a pass. Now we pray. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to pray for We pray for us all. All right. We pray for, for it all, but we examine these things to learn lessons from this thing. Do you hear me? All right. But so many things go on. So, so many things go on. All right. And, and it's unnecessary. We have to be able to talk about this thing. So if you are a scared, weak, docile Christian, get your fake, phony, foolish self off my page. Do you hear me? All right. Do you hear me? Because I'm saved, but ain't nothing soft about me but my skin. Do you hear me? But my skin. Hello. Thank you, One Love. All right. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for y'all comments. 
Oh, y'all had some good comments uh, before I play this video. Y'all had some awesome comments on the last video. Dinah, I wanted to say something because you were actually right. I was thinking of, I don't even want to say his name, that self-aware narcissist when I was saying mental illness. Um, but you're you're right. It is a it is a uh, personality disorder by this world standard that affects the spirit. All right. So there is a difference between mental illness and um personality disorder all right a lot of uh uh adhd is a mental disorder i believe if i'm thinking right uh depression all right so there are there is a difference between a mental illness so i'm glad you said that and there were some other comments i wrote them down i wanted to say them but this message uh i may do another message on y'all comments because y'all had some great comments in the last video okay so go back and watch that that video will bless your life our narcissist satan's children and we already said nope they're not all right so i don't i want you to formulate your own opinion or not all right all right so let's get into this i'm going to share this screen now and this video is uh courtesy of layla lynn let me see let me make this bigger and then i'll share up my screen oh yeah let me say this all right uh the fair use act all right this site is for educational purposes only all right let me put my my disclaimer copyright disclaimer in here okay this is made for fair use all right for criticism and comment okay so let me play this let me share this out uh, let's see of 28 years with a ring from a Cracker Jack box. Now there's a lot wrong with the sentence I just said, but none of it is allegedly or inaccurate or anything like that. Bishop Noel Jones just turned 72 years old and he's been dating his girlfriend Loretta on and off for 28 years. And they both appeared on the reality show Preachers of LA about seven years ago. And their relationship was very controversial because of the fact that Loretta wanted to get married and it seemed like Bishop Noel Jones was just stringing her along. And for a man that preaches the word of God to people to string a woman along like that just seemed wrong on so many levels. But now at 72, Bishop Noel Jones has decided to marry Loretta so that he does not have to grow old alone. He literally says in his proposal that you're about to watch that he's going to need someone to push his wheelchair soon. And he also talks about all the freedom he's given up by marrying her. It really was a sad proposal if y'all ask me. I try to keep my opinion to a minimum in these videos, but I have to tell you guys, this was a really sad proposal if you ask me. And y'all can watch and tell me what y'all think in the comments. But if you listen closely to the words coming out of his mouth, they actually sound insulting. And he literally pulls a ring out of a Cracker Jack box. I couldn't make this up if I tried. Y'all take a look. He said, no, you're going to wait a while until somebody going to have to deal with you broken down. Because they won't be able to say, I can put up with him drooling. I can put up with him needing the wheelchair pushed. I can put up with him falling out the bed. Because it wasn't always that way. But he said, Reverend. You will wait until it's only that way. <laughs> so I decided that I'm going to get married. And it, when it was rumored some time ago that I was getting married, I remember saying to you that I've been with you for 20 something years then, not 28 like it is now. It was about 24. No, it was about, 
Uh, yeah, it don't matter. But I told you that I wouldn't. We held hands every Sunday. We related to each other every Sunday. And I told you that I would not sneak off somewhere and get mad and let you find out on the side. So I'm telling you today, security, I'm telling you today that I'm going to get mad. Well, I'd rather come up here, please. Censoring who comes to my house. I don't like him. She sure can't come. I thought about should I have to give up my Ferrari, buy a station wagon. And then when I looked at her, I said, well, should you have to push a wheelchair when I can't walk? <laughs> Don't go so fast, slow down. Should you have to deal with an old man when you could have have many suitors who are so young. Should you have to be listening to a man who's intoxicated with the exuberance of his own verbosity? Should you have to deal with somebody who is set in his ways? After I thought about all the shoulds, I decided that if I keep on thinking about sure, then I won't get this thing done. So I need you to give me some help here. I got to pull something out of it. I got to give me a Cracker Jack ring up there. With Karma Drive, you can track your driving score, which could help unlock a new car insurance rate. Although, if you go to yoga by...
away from all the shoulds. Should I? Should you? And I've decided simply to say, will you? Uh -uh -uh. Marry me. If I was Loretta, I could not have accepted a ring presented to me. Well, very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Nothing about God. Nothing even about her. We got to be able to talk about, the, oh, you shouldn't talk about this. Why not? Why not? I want my sister to know if you ever get a proposal like that, if you ever, I don't care if, if he claims to be a man of God, if you get a proposal like that, that is all about him. I don't care if it's a so-called man of God. Do you understand me? We got to stop making excuses for people. We, we got to stop that. But you make your own. I want to show you all this other one, too. Right. I won't play as much. I just want you to see something. This was, this is, let me see. This is the show. This is where I first was introduced uh, to them. Thank you. Dietrich, hi. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Big Thank you. Big Thank you. All of you have a seat. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey. So, yes, Noel, I'm still married. Still married. Thank you. <laughs> what a nod I tied. Yes. <laughs> All those years ago, we, Noelle officiated me and my husband's wedding. Um, but congrats, uh, congratulations on your show. I understand it's the number one show on Oxygen. And I, I love it. Um, Jay, does being a reality TV reverend, Bishop, does that affect you, how you relate to your congregation? Uh, actually, it's, it's, incre it's actually given me a better plat platform. There are a lot of people who come to our church as a result of this show. Let me let me share uh, just an incredible story with you quickly. There was a lady living in Kentucky, mm -hmm. uh, stage four bone cancer, not giving much longer to live. Her bucket list to, of things to do before she died as a result of the show was to come and meet me and my wife. She came to our church yesterday. Mm -hmm. We called her in front of the church and prayed That's for terrific. her and ministered to her. You know, my, my thing... My thing, Dietrich, is is that I think I'd be one of those people if I was going to one of you all's churches, I'd quit on the day that I saw the cameras come in. Like, what? Yeah, I, 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 I just would not want my minister, my reverend, to be doing reality TV, and then now the cameras are always in the services and outside the services and picking me up. It'd be like a little a bit of a turn-off, yeah, not a turn-on. Wouldn't you want to know the real guy behind the platform? Um, no, not on reality TV. Because I, I don't, I don't, it's I don't the find, it's I don't, the perfect there's nothing real though about reality TV. Now, Ron. Yes, ma'am. You're the one. How you and, doing? How you doing? Don't say that. And I, I see you brought your lovely wife with you. LeVette. Hi, LeVette. <laughs> Ron. Yes. The critics really get on you. They say that you are entirely too flashy. You're, you're um, you talk about the jets and the designer clothes and, and um, you, you quick walk and you have a guns. Um, what's your response to them? Well, it's like this. God said, I would that you prosper and be in health. Jesus says, seek you first the kingdom. You know, they don't see the schools I've built, the Christian academies, the boys home I have, the 1200 homes, the work I do in South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, the Dominican Republic. I don't go to strip joints. I don't gamble. I don't drink. I don't, I'm not into porn. I love my wife. Been married 30 years. Yeah. Uh, been pastoring 26 years. So the Bible says, "No, the laborer is worthy of his hire." So the, I just, they just need to be informed before they. I, come I was in. one of those people yeah. on the first, on the first oh. couple of episodes. I oh. wasn't sure about so you. I guy. thought that you were really, really like flashy. It's, it was like 
way too much. Like, we could tell the, the others of you all are not starving, but you were this very flashy. And then I saw you go to Compton. And then I heard you say that you were a former gang member. And then I saw you um, tr help out, Sean. try to help out the best you can. And then I said, I get it. You know, the church needs somebody like you. Yeah. Because there are so many wayward people out there from all, you know, I just like what you do with the, with the gang members and stuff a lot. In fact, I just got my sister Sean out the drug house. She was on heroin for 30 years. Oh my God. I took my wife, Lavette, and my sister. We went jeopardizing our lives snatched her out the drug house and you'll see on the closing episode now she's in a rehab center she's doing fine i'm getting That's ready great. to get into a church so she continued to grow mature and develop in the things That's of great. god and he, was great. Great. he was a gang member he was a gang member you also you also are on yeah. drugs yourself yeah. and jay you were also on drugs yourself yeah unfortunately now dietrich um dietrich is married but his wife got pregnant during the time that he was divorcing his ex-wife <laughs> now I was judging too. Only it's not what you it's not what you think. That's true. Explain. Well, I, I don't believe in making excuses. I believe in taking responsibility for your actions. And uh, uh, I actually went through a hard time where I really just left church, left preaching, singing gospel music, and I was in a space where I just didn't want to do it anymore. But you and I'm, I'm, I met my beautiful wife. And she was like my angel, you know? Yeah, but you met her out in L.A. In L.A., yeah. Where you were married and set up a home with your ex-wife was someplace other than L.A. Absolutely. So you all filed for separation with the intent on getting a divorce. No, we were divorcing, yeah. Oh, you were already divorced? No, we're divorced process. You were in the process of divorce. Yes. That's what I mean. Lord you were still married. Mercy. Yes. Okay. Well. <laughs> all right, sir. All right. You were still married, okay. but you didn't cheat on your wife. You just happened to have met somebody, and then she got pregnant. Now you're married to that woman. Yeah, people try to put two and two together. You know, he left his wife for a younger woman in L.A. Of and course. had a baby. You know, that wasn't the case. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm glad that you're here to, to explain that. Now, Noelle, um, <laughs> Noelle has a special friend named Loretta. That's the one you saw in the clip. Yes. They've been friends for 16 years. Um, what what is it, what are we looking for for you? Do you want to get married? Uh, subjectively, I have to. <laughs> oh my gosh, you! I, I have I have to fix me. Yes. You know. Well, what time will that be? Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> if you want to eat healthy and feel your best, you've got to try cachava. Cachava is the world's healthiest. It's, it's interesting if you just understood my upbringing. My mother took me to Jamaica and I grew up in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so I had a little poem, I have a mother and a grandmother, never in love with the one for the other, because I was always left at the gate when my mother would come home and I would be left there knowing mm -hmm. my grandmother wasn't my mother and my step grandfather was a little harsh. Mm -hmm. So I associated my mother, my grandmother, with my step grandfather, who was very harsh. At what and, point do we outgrow uh, so, these things and hey, just decide, look, world, hey, I'm not getting I, married? I, I preach to myself every day. If you were invited to the Oscars tomorrow and you had one plus one, would Loretta be your plus one? Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you. Up next, everybody, we're going to get the preachers to, uh, and their take on Kanye West and a whole lot more. So <laughs> keep it here. During the commercial break, you don't understand, we played Stomp. And Dietrich got up in the audience and was ministering and dancing. And then, and then uh, Ron was crip walking and doing it. was so good. I love our show. Anyway, so we're back, everybody, with the stars of The Preachers of L.A. Bishop Joan, your sister is legendary singer, entertainer Grace Jones, who we all love. Now, I've heard that that your sister refuses to collaborate with Lady Gaga. What can you tell me about this? Well, I get caught in the middle because uh, her managers, Lady Gaga's managers, reach out for me uh -huh. and they would like Grace to do something with Lady Gaga since Lady Gaga actually idolizes Grace because she no. copied a lot from Grace's uh, nouveau. Yes, look. and so Grace is against it because But Grace she's... won't do it. Grace is just a major diva. Yeah. <laughs> I would love them to collapse. All right, y'all. We can stop that. I know some of it is stopped for you guys. Let me get off of here. All right. Enough of that. I just wanted y'all to see y'all. The thing cycled. All right. It cycled while we were going. So if you if you got kicked out, just come back on in. All right.
Are y'all still with me? Put a one in your chat if y'all still with me. Put a one in the chat. It was. Put a one in the chat if you're still with me. I'm going to say a prayer and we're going to go on. All right. Matter of fact, I'll say a prayer where y'all uh, might be coming back on in. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this conversation, Lord. We thank you for the assembly of the saints. Heavenly Father, let my speech be pleasing to you, Lord. Let us pull the lessons out, Lord. Let us use these things as cautionary tales, Heavenly Father, not to condemn, not to shame, Lord, but see things for what they really are, Heavenly Father. For anybody that is going through the situation, anybody that may be breadcrumbed by a narcissist, anybody that may be in a narcissistic relationship, Lord, we pray that you be with them, Lord, that you uh, open their eyes, Lord, and if, if it's their will and if it's your will, Lord, that you make a way of escape for them, Heavenly Father. Lord, we, we call for, uh, for godly marriages, godly covenants, Heavenly Father, especially in this year, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for kingdom relationships and be to kingdom, to be kingdom minded, Lord. We, we uh, plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, and we just ask you to be a part of our lives. Lord, I repent for any sins made by commission and omission, and we just ask you to be a part of this conversation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Are y'all still with me? Let me know if y'all still with me let me know if y'all still with me put a one in the chat if y'all are still with me can you hear me can you see me all right let me see i'll wait until i see if somebody if some tell me if y'all still here <laughs> mm -hmm. i'll wait a second Okay, if the stream ended, I'm going to come back in. Okay, so if y'all can hear me, I'm going to come back in, okay? Okay, I'm back. Okay, so they cut it off. Okay, <laughs> okay am I back? Y'all let me know. Okay, new stream is up. That's fine. That's fine because I don't care about the stream. I don't care about the views and the likes. I just want people to understand. I knew it was going to get a copyright um, claim on it, but I, at least y'all in here got to see it. Okay, y'all back. All right. I just pray. I pray while y'all was on. <laughs> Look, I was just praying. Okay. Yeah. So if even if that video gets taken down or whatever, YouTube will usually email me. If it's, and that's why I try to make sure I put the fair use. And, and you. that's crazy, though, because you see... Look, when I watch other people's videos, they use other people's videos. Like, it's YouTube. You know what I mean? So usually you have to put the Fair Use Act. You have to give video credit. You have to give all that stuff. So I was trying to make sure that I crossed my, my T's, all right, and dotted my I's. But that's okay. Right, right. Lois, like, that's enough. But no, I wanted to make sure that um, you at least knew the background of that, that thing. So I just said a prayer while we was on there mm -hmm. okay i'm back i'm back i'm back y'all i'm back so even if that stream uh was taken down or is taken down it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at least y'all see all right at least you know right right okay all right all right so you know the background so the women and somebody said this in the comment right the women running up disturbed me and then her just standing there while he talked about himself for like 11 minutes that was kind of um disturbing you know what i mean that was kind of disturbing okay good good amen i'm back i'm back amen all right and then somebody says something about old fools and pastor ron he seems like he's on a, on a different um level uh him and his wife but and then somebody mentioned prayers for wendy absolutely i do pray for her i absolutely do and i pray for um loretta and and uh bishop noel as well i pray for i pray for all parties involved all right i i really do all right i just we got to be able because wendy's video probably uh-huh all right that's fine no problem that we're gonna keep it moving all right but at least y'all here right and that's what i was saying like that was weird all right that was weird so breadcrumbs right let's talk about uh breadcrumbs 
yeah, she was groomed for three decades to stand there while he walked out. Wasn't that weird? Like it was no hugging. Well, he did hug her. I don't want to speak uh, uh, in error, but he did give her a peck or something. You know what I mean? He gave her a peck or something. All right. And then like that was it. All right. That was it. So I don't know. Right. Tearing them up with the facts. Tearing them up with the facts. All right. So, um, Ooh, this this is hard, you know, because as women, um, we can be deceived more easily. We are the weaker vessels. That is true. All right. And and a lot of women call themselves uh, Christian, but they are not sound in doctrine, uh, theology and studying. All right. And in really following God's word, a lot of women will like to listen to a man more than they will listen to God. And this is how silly women get led astray. They don't, when we don't know the word of God for ourselves, when we don't study to show thyself approved, all right? The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I don't know it all, I'm, right? But I know a God who knows it all. Do you understand me? And the more you sit with God, the more uh, your discernment is increased. Does it mean you won't ever be fooled? Absolutely not. But when things come up, when we go into the churches, when we go into the four wall churches, we'll be able to discern a wolf from a sheep. We'll be able to divide truth from, from, uh, from lies. All right. But what has happened, we can't discern. All right. A lot of people, because they don't study the word of God, they don't have a true relationship with God. And now men are able, men and women are able to be led astray. All right. We don't want that. All right. So breadcrumbs, do you hear me? All right. Uh, breadcrumbs. All right. It is when somebody typically, uh, and it could be, you don't have to be a narcissist to breadcrumb someone, but you just string them along. That's those good morning, good evening texts, but there's really no follow through. All right. There's really no follow up. All right. They really don't want to see you. They're just planting seeds. All right. They're just sprinkling a little breadcrumb so that you don't leave. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So you have to leave somebody who is trying to breadcrumb you. You have to leave them because as long as you allow yourself to be breadcrumb, you are holding yourself from the person that God has for you. All right. And they give you just enough, just enough to keep you holding on. Don't you understand that? And um, uh, we'll talk about this. And you're right. I guess pertaining to this case, let me show a few pictures, right? Let me show a few pictures. And these things are not even allegedly, all right, during that 28 years, he fathered a, a child with another woman. I guess the child is like 10 years old or something like that. She was on some show. Let me see. Let me read this. All right. All right. Um, her name is Stacy Francis or something like that. Stacy. All right. She has a daughter um, with, uh, with uh, Pastor Bishop. All right. She has a pastor, uh, a baby with him. All right. So yeah, there was some fornication, some something going on there. All right. Um, and then somebody said, uh, uh, Lisa Ray. Yes. Lisa Ray was, um, they were engaged. Um, I don't even know if that's allegedly. All right. They were engaged during that time. And, and I'm always curious when a man of the cloth chooses a worldly woman, you know what I mean? All these women in the church and you have to go outside, you know, like, uh, Keon and Henderson Mary is Mary Shiny O'Neill. That's their business. That's their business. Okay. But I'm always, it always, you know, peaks my, 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 my radar when I see a man of the cloth or a man of God marry a world, a worldly woman. All right. All right. All right. Uh, and, and let me see. Yeah. So he supposedly was friends with Nene Leakes and and this is the woman, his child's mother. She was on the X Factor. She was a finalist on X Factor or something like that. All right. Um, so, so yeah. So this this thing is interesting. And, and someone mentioned, I think Donna mentioned uh, the one preacher. Yeah, he wasn't. I forgot his name. I didn't care for him. Um, he's there on the end. Um, and he might be a, 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 a awesome orator. A lot of these men are, or, are, are excellent orators. They are excellent with their mouths and their tongues. And did you hear what he said? He said he's marrying. Well, let me go back up. What did he say? He said um, she's going to marry a man who's intoxi intoxicated with the exuberance, basically, of his own bravado. I was like, 
what what are you saying now i got what he i picked up what he was i'm picking up what you putting down but i was like miss loretta sister loretta are you hearing what he's saying you're marrying a man who was intoxicated with the exuberance of his own self not of god's exuberance not intoxicated with the most high he's intoxicated with the exuberance of his own self now this man is an orator he is a walking dictionary much like ti he is a walking dictionary a walking thesaurus uh he is excellent with his words and his vernacular is very smooth didn't you hear how he was talking this is a smooth one do you hear me all right but we got to be able to recognize these things and i'm not saying he is or he isn't but somebody like that you have to be able Able to recognize these things do you understand me so when somebody is breadcrumbing you and then they're having relationships and babies on the side and they are a man or woman of god we have to be able to call a thing a thing and then we have so many people who just oh no they make mistakes yes we all are gonna make mistakes all right just like uh uh, Pastor Ron, he was an ex gang member. God is going to use dusty people. He can use us all. All right. But we got to be willing to leave that lifestyle behind. All right. We have to be able to crucify this flesh and being and, and integrating with this world is not the way that we are supposed to do it. All right. We're not supposed to do that. Girl, I ain't, ain't going to say what you say. I see the kind. I'm look, I'm going to sit my team. Because, girl, the Christians, the so-called Christians will come after you. I'm a Christ follower. I follow Christ. I don't follow men like that. I give honor. I give reverence. All right? I'm very careful on how I speak about people. Well, we got to be able to call a thing a thing. All right? Yes, make sure y'all hit the like button, you know, because the other video probably going to get taken down. But at least y'all see it. It doesn't matter. Right? Lucifer was intoxicated with himself. And we see where that landed him. Right? Anybody, you intoxicated with yourself? Why would I be intoxicated with myself? Me? No. Uh-uh. I was a saint. I was a sinner. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Out of the abundance, the heart speaks. Right? That's all you got to do is listen. So we're going to talk about this. So let me go through this because I didn't belabor the point. All right. So the forever supply. All right. Let's talk about the traits, all right, of the forever supply. All right. What are the signs of the forever supply? All right. Low self-worth, self, uh, low self-esteem. All right. You can be beautiful. You can be pretty. You can be all of that. All right. But something inside of you uh, is tolerating that. All right. So we have to examine that. I had to do that with myself. I was like, I thought I had high self-esteem. I thought I loved myself. But I allow myself to be in an abusive relationship. So that wasn't to blame me, but that's so I could take accountability and go deeper than what was on the surface. Do you hear me? All right. I had a high tolerance for abuse. That is a, a sign. The forever supply has a high tolerance for emotional abuse. All right. They are emotionally bankrupt a lot of times. All right. They can be easily fooled and filled. Uh, uh, fulfilled by the bare minimum. If somebody is giving you the bare minimum, do you understand me? Or they may be giving you gifts and things, but they're not emotionally invested in you. All right. That's a sign you're being breadcrumbed. You need to run. All right. And the narcissist is able to use intermittent reinforcement to keep you in the stable. Oh yes, I'm going there. We're going to, we're going to break down pimp all right, terminology. I'm going to break down pimp terminology because a lot of people, I'm not talking about him. Don't be right me talking about him. I'm not talking about him, but I want you to understand a lot of these people, a lot of these preachers have gone from being pimps to the pulpit and it's an easy transition. All right, we're going to talk about that. All right. So they're able to use reinforcement to keep you in the stable forever. That's what pimps call their 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 uh, their women. They call you the stable. All right. And that and the narcissist uh, and in the biblical world, we call that a harem. All right. Uh, just like the kings had a harem. Solomon had over what, 700 wives of concubines. And that's what they're doing that these men. All right. All right. Will make you their concubines. And if you get a Jezebel, she'll make you part of her harem, too. All right. It ain't just for men. 
all right but we know in, in biblical terms all right a woman all right when a man put his hands on her all right she became part of his harem of being a concubine for him and she just sat up there and couldn't go anywhere she sat up there with him and that's what the narcissist does to you they taint you all right they put their fingerprints all on you so that now all right you're marked and then you won't even date while he's out here dating the world lisa ray and, and all these other women and doing different things and brothers the woman a woman a, a jezebel will do it too all right all right so let's talk about this so the, uh no one is number one with the narcissist no one is number one but their harem their stable all right will fight amongst one another all right they want to be the top or the bottom in a pimp world it's called the bottom they want the bottom spot and in the church the woman wants the top spot she wants to be the queen bee do you understand me but a lot of these are some, not all of them we got some awesome men of god some awesome women of god all right but some of these people are pimps on the strong they objectify you are means to an end all right and the narcissist a lot of times unless they are somatic uh uh a narcissist perceives intimacy they don't like intimacy and they use sex as, uh, the uh they're able to use sex as a weapon all right and and some of them will hold sex and withhold affection all right and they know you want it and they they know that you want that so the narcissist uh keeps people in their harem all right whether male or female they keep people in their harem all right so that you can be used whenever they get ready for you they'll go out and play the field all right future fake you future fake your socks off all right but all the while all right they're playing you they are playing you all right so this this particular uh um uh, uh bishop knows or uh, bishop no he uh was dated her off and on for 28 years and after 28 years she got a ring out of a cracker jack box and it's sad because some women will see this and they're like oh she got it she has it I, you know, if I stay with, with, with whoever I'm with, you know, there's hope for me. There's hope for me. And some, some of them, it ain't, it's no hope for you. All right. So my heart goes out there. She's a beautiful woman. They run a restaurant. She seems to manage his affairs and different things when they were on the show. I don't know if that's like that now, but on the show, she seemed to manage his affairs. And now she seems like she's going to be his nurse uh, as he gets up in age. So if she likes it, I love it. Do you understand me? But, um, yeah uh it's, it's kind of sad it's kind of sad um it's, it's very sad all right but uh i wish them the best best uh if god's hand is in this you know I, I, uh blessings up on them but god ain't in every relationship so we got to stop acting like that he's not in everything but um uh but this particular one i, I you know my prayers go out to them they do that is, she's gonna need it she's gonna need them prayers okay but we have to be able now switching away from them not not talking about them not talking about them we have to be able to recognize a pimp in the pulpit all right we have to be able to recognize a pimp in the pulpit all right all right somebody who is trying to make you a part of their stable all right i'm not saying he is i'm, I'm finding the lessons learned here all right some of these men all right have the same dialect dialect distinction and rhetoric as a pimp named slick back do you understand me yeah i'm going there you remember that song i'm your pusher i'm your mama i'm your daddy uh i'm that in the alley all right uh, whatever however that song with i'm your pusher all right and the narcissist will become your pimp will become your drug of choice if you don't know the signs if you are a silly woman that is getting led astray do you understand me these people will groom and condition they groom and condition you from early on they get you young they get you young all the better all right but they'll take an old fool but the old fools gotta watch out because a lot of times they'll trade you right on up for a newer model they'll upgrade you they'll trade you right on up when you get old do you understand me but a narcissistic pimp knows the game do you understand me you remember that pimp uh bishop don magic wand became a pastor after leaving the pimp game like i said if you know the pimp game you can run the pulpit all right and god ain't nowhere in that and a lot of these people if you see them they got the they got the bravado they got the arrogance just like a pimp 
the understand me. All right. Some, not all. Some of them took a, play, a page. I'm going old school here. Some of y'all might be too young to remember this. But back in the day, there were black exploitation films from the 70s. You remember Pam Greer and Ron O'Neill and, and all of these, these pimps. All right. And some of these, some of them became safe for real in which the church is. Some of them figured out how to make the money, how to make the women work for them. Because if you can get into a woman's mind, oh, the woman. Well, didn't Adam, didn't didn't uh, uh, Satan do Eve like that? If you can get the woman, you can get the man. All right. If you can get the woman, you can get her money. Do you understand me? So some of these people took a page from black exploitation films and they figured out the game and they figured out how to run game on silly women. All right. I'm not saying that he is. All right. But it made me think of how women get led astray by narcissistic pimps who use religion and spirituality to control. So we're going to walk this thing. I'm going to show you all some movies. So let's take a look at how uh, 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 narcissists all right, use pimpology, all right, to get in your head. So when you are a pimp, all right, in the pulpit, like I said, all you got to get is women to support you. Women will take care of you. Women will enable you because we are nurturers by design. Do you understand me? We are nurturers by design. So especially when you have, when you get her mind, she will, you bring her mind under subjection, her body will follow, all right? You get in her head, her money will follow. She will sacrifice her kids for you. I told you I was a small sacrifice for a narcissist in a narcissistic marriage, all right? Because she was being controlled, all right? She was being controlled by a narcissistic pimp. Uh, when you are, when a woman is under a, a narcissist rule, she will sell you out like a crackhead looking for some crack. Do you understand me? When you have a crackhead for a mother or father, that mother or father will not protect you, all right? They will sell you. They will allow people to do things strange things for a piece of change do you understand me and then the, the, all that then the women did the same thing in the church these are the grandmothers all right these these grandmothers that was running to the stage these were some of the same women in the 70s and 80s all right they were being controlled by pimps they just simply turned in their their uh the 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 worldly they turned it in for religion so that they can follow me. They just got a different pimp. Do you understand me? They just they just got a different, they just got a different pimp. So instead of the pimp on the corner, instead of Bishop Magic Don Juan, now they got past the they got past the such and such. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? So they your mama, that this man will be your mama, your daddy. And if it's a, a woman, she'll try to control you because she has a Jezebelic spirit. All right. She will be your pusher. He will be your pusher. And they will give you attention and little intermittent breadcrumbs to keep you in their stable. Do you understand me? This conversation may I haven't been saved all my life. Do you understand me? So if this conversation is too real for you, just go ahead and log off. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Slick Rick. Mm -hmm. They slick. They slick. All right. They slick. They do. Hey, Violicia. Yes, uh, Fashion Me Chick. It's good to see y'all. It's good to see y'all in here. Right. Right. See, see if, you, if you're young, you ain't gonna know about Bishop Magic Don Juan. Let me, show, let me see if I have a picture in here. Uh, I might not have put it in here. All right. I might not have put it in here. But yeah, they just take they, they pimp hat on. They put their pimp hat on. All right. All right. You remember how the preachers, uh, who was that? Al Sharpton. All right, they, they had the hair, hair uh, curled up. They look like uh, pimps. They look like pimps. Yes, they did. See, this is all. See, a pimp just trades in one harem for another. All right, now he gets to use the members as as uh, as their stable. All right. So, hello. When I go to church, go to church, I want to see some men in the congregation. That's why I love when men brothers come in here. All right, we we need men. All right, when it's an all women church, you best believe. Mm -mm. And I love my sisters. I love my sisters, but there should be some men up in there. See, because a lot of times, ooh, and it's some, I ain't going there yet. Y'all ain't ready yet. Y'all ain't warmed up enough. I got I to gotta break this thing down some more. All right. So I don't, I want to see some men. I want to see some men who are not all yes men. 
Do you understand me? All right. Now, so a lot of times they will put yes men around them. They will put men around them who will not tell them the truth because they like the power too. And they figure if they get next to this pimp in the pulpit, some of that will rub right off of it. So women don't know the game and the mindset of a man. All right. And a lot of times that a man will use that. And likewise, brother, these Jezebels will use your weaknesses to exploit you do you understand me this might be a conversation that's too real for you so with a pimp all right a stable is a big a group of victims who are under the control of a single pimp so you trade a stable for a congregation and you got yourself you in there all right all right a john is a buyer or a trick it's an individual who pays or trades something of value for sexual acts it's a sugar daddy all right all right um i know uh we got some truck drivers lot lizards a lot lizard is a person all right who will go from truck to truck all right looking or all right uh really prostituting at truck stops all right a madam oh it's always a madam look at r kelly's look at these cases it's always an enabling woman look at harvey weinstein all right look at these women uh, uh epstein it's always an enabling woman next to a, a man in power do you understand me that's part of the game that's this person is called a madam all right she is an older woman who manages the the brothel she manages the stable all right and she usually works works in in tandem with other ones all right all right and even if you get out of pocket that's when you get out of pocket with your pimp all right all right when when they're not under control all right in a church it will usually be the uh a, a prophet or a scapegoat all right in a narcissistic family that's that's a scapegoat they we usually get out of pocket what a pimp would say out of pocket all right then a pimp circle see a lot of these pastors they have pimp circles all right they in, encircle all right the victim to intimidate through verbal and physical threats in order to discipline them so if you speak up against it that pimp circle see the, the madams will come out so that's all that all that person well she was a madam all right was a madam because she was part of the pimp circle because you can't tell them nothing because they'll surround you like a hawk all right to try to get you to shut up do you understand me and then pimps have a quota it's a set amount of money all right that that their uh, uh that the woman uh must uh make before she can come home all right all right if if, if she come home without without his money all right oh it's going down all right so in a in a congregation ran by a pimp this is your offering they must convince you to give up your rent money to pay you to pay their bills so they can live in their jets and ain't nothing wrong with having money it's nothing wrong with having but you want to get that the right way not through bamboozling and and leading silly woman astray do you understand me so sometimes the visiting pimps all right and pastors will visiting pimps we ain't calling these pastors they ain't no real ones there's some real ones out there i'm not talking about the real ones there's some visiting pimps all right and they'll have a visiting pimp come into the congregation and they'll come together to him and haul and sway the congregation to give up the money so that they can meet their quota do you understand me all right then if you reckless eyeball all right if a woman if, if she chose you i didn't choose you, her she, your, your trick chose me all right when uh if, if if your woman is with somebody else and she does she's eyeballing another one all right they call that reckless eyeballing do you understand me so you better not visit nobody's other church because the pastor the pimp all right will get you all right that's some reckless eyeballing all right you can't be over there looking at at another church you can't be over are looking you can't be reading the bible for yourself or you can't be doing that's reckless eyeballing all right all right and then if they call it a family all right a family all right there these people who are under control of the same pimp all right and this this person plays the role of daddy all right y'all just become sister wives you know when they when the harem gets along so well all right they get uh, get along so well that they become like sister wives all right they become uh 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 friends all right because they're all a part uh of this under the same pimp all right so i just wanted y'all to know this all right and then seasoning see these was these movies so they just simply moved from one from one to another that's all they did that's all they did some of these i want you to be able to recognize this i want you to be able to recognize this thing 
All right. I want you to be able to recognize a pimp in the pulpit. All right. And then they call it seasoning. It's a combination of psychological manipulation, intimidation. All right. They may uh, rape or, or do some unholy acts. All right. They deprive their victim of sleep, isolation from who who that sound like isolation from friends or family, other sources of support, threatening or holding a hostage uh, um, or threatening or holding hostage seasoning is done to break down a victim's resistance and ensure compliance. Oh, oh Lord, help us. All right. So when you go into churches, into four wall churches, you need to be able to discern and look into some things. Is there a pimp in the pulpit? Is there a pimp down? Is there a pimp down? All right, because a pimp down will put you on a stroll. Do you understand me? All right, do you understand me? Is the is the past it always pandering to women? All right, women are eating up. Look at look at uh uh Derek Jackson when life coaches are uh, men always pandering to women. No, I take note of that. I take note of that. Do you hear me? Because I wanted uh 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 because that thing look he'll have you in a bonnet of salvation. Do you understand me? All right. And usually these are the main ones who are beating their wives or mistreating their girlfriends behind closed doors. All right. So they put on airs to make you think that they are holier than thou. All right. Watch passes that pander to women. All right. Out here. Uh, all these men out here needing uh, needing mentors and not to say that a man because a lot of women have daddy issues. But you got to be uh, careful. All right. Some men will exploit your issues. Do you understand me? And I'm not saying that men can't teach women, but there are certain things. All right. When you notice that a woman is wounded, brother, get away from her. Let her let God heal her. Do you understand me? Because a pimp in distress will put you on a whole stroll. Do you understand me? All right. Pimps turn pushers. Uh, pimps turning and uh, hurting silly women and turning them into modern day prostitutes, into modern day ha uh, harems. All right. So we got to understand this. And then, and then, see, when you're a pimp, you have a bottom chick. I ain't going to say the word. You have a bottom chick. All right. This is the one who's been with the pimp the most longest. Do you understand me? All right. And I got this. I forgot what website I got this off of. I'll put it in here. All right. Uh, she takes uh, often takes mid-level controlling role to keep. She's almost like a madam to keep other victims in line. All right. All right. So the, the bottom chick. Oh, the bottom chick. And most of them want to be the bottom chick. So that's what them women were running up to the stage. They want to be the bottom chick. Chick. They want to. They wanted to be the one chosen. All right. So they they thought that was cool. All right. But the bottom chick is the one who has been with the pimp the longest. Do you understand me? Can you see the parallels? All right. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that's what they did. But I just want you to be able to see the parallel. A lot of these women are hurt. They are rejected, and they just want to be chosen. They just want to be chosen because when a woman has daddy issues, she'll go looking for a man who can be her idol and he'll turn her into his bottom chick. Do you understand me? He'll turn her into the main thing. All right. into the forever supply and add her into his pimp collection. All right. And he'll pull you out like an old fur coat, fur, uh, fur coat when he wants to show you off. All right. And you remember in, uh, in the, um, uh, in the Bible with Queen Vashti. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So some of these people traded in, in their feather fedora for a pimp, all right, for a pimp role in, or being a pimp in the pulpit. It's an easy transition if you a pimp because that pimp has the gift of gab. A narcissistic pimp has the gift of gab. Do you understand me? So when a pimp is down, he looks for, for his, bottom, uh, his bottom chick, his forever supply to come rescue him like the slithering snake that he is. All right. And the same thing for a woman. All right. When she gets down and low on supply, a narcissistic woman. All right. She's looking in her harem. She's looking in her Rolodex seeing if she can call up Jimmy. All right. Because Jimmy all always comes running she knows how to put that blue dress on she knows how to she knows jimmy's weakness she's just like delilah she knows your weaknesses do you understand me she knows what it takes she knows your favorite meal she knows how your secret she knows just how what 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 to do and when to do it she knows do you understand that do you understand that 
girl, the bonnet, the bonnet, all right? But it takes a special kind of woman to be able to recognize this and stand strong, all right? Do you understand me? All right, let's 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 take a look at Queen Vashti right quick, all right? We remember Queen Vashti, all right? There was a big feast going on, all right? And the king, right? The king wanted, King Xerxes wanted uh, uh, Vashti to, to come out, right? To come out and parade her around. Now, the Bible, um, some people say that, that because she was so beautiful, uh, he wanted to parade her out in in front of the the other men, in front of the uh, the other uh, the the other uh, people in the uh, courts. All right, but Vashti refused to come out. All right, she refused to come before the king and his men, and the king became furious. All right, that's in Esther uh, one and twelve, and the king uh, became furious at her. All right, and she was dethroned. All right, see some women they go they'll do whatever because they don't want to be dethroned by the king. All right. All right. Vashti was told to put on her crown and parade around. And, and some people say, you know, uh, he, you know, she was supposed to be naked or whatever the case is. But somebody that love you is going to protect you. They don't care. All right. I mean, they don't they they will protect you and they will want to parade you around and show your virtue. Do you understand that? But Vashti stood strong. All right. She but in their in their sight, she had done wrong, but she wasn't wrong. She stood up for what she believed in. Do you understand me? And then that's when uh, Queen Esther, all right, came into uh, into play. And we know what Esther did, all right? But uh, it takes a strong woman to say, no, nah. uh-uh. it takes a different type of woman to say, no, nah, you're not going to put me, you're not going to parade me. You're not going to have me as part of your harem, even if that means dethroning me. Do you understand that? But some people, they don't, they so rejected. All right. They don't, they don't want to be dethroned. So they'll do anything that narcissist wants them to do. Don't you know that's dangerous? All right. Don't you know that's dangerous when somebody wants to objectify you? But when a man objectifies you and makes you a part of his harem, all right, a part of his stable, he'll parade you and allow his friends to misuse you and he will not protect you. But when you're a Vashti in the spirit and you know your worth and you know who God is, all right, you won't allow a pimp from a pulpit to parade you like a horse in a stable. Do you understand me? All right. Do you understand me? All right. Let me see what y'all said in here before I wrap up. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the narcissists, amen. They never correct, they never correct the women. Never because they like it. Because they like it. And they should. In love, they should. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. On the show, the pastor's wives, they did try to get Loretta to recognize how to achieve her place in Jones' life, but she knew the assignment and was uh she was given by Jones and played it out to the end. Right. Stay away. Stay away, stay away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a pimp term. See, people don't understand that. Thank you, lyricist. That's a pimp term. That's a pimp term. All right. When he's the daddy, all right. He's the daddy. All right. Remember when I talked about that? Um, who was it that uh that BBL cult? All right. She was having them women call her zaddy and daddy. See, when you see that all on social media, they don't know that that's a pimp term. They don't know where that came from. All right. Somebody trying to be your daddy. That's why I don't like spiritual fathers. I don't like that. That That's weird to me. But some a, a, lot, a lot of people in the church are into that. I think you, you can be my mentor, but you're not my spiritual mother and father. You know, that that's that's just me. Oh, she don't know church protocol. No, I'm not down with it. That's probably why God took me out to church. Now, if he put me back in it, I will follow. You know, I'll follow. But I, my brain is going with me. Do you understand me? My common sense of discernment is going with me. Do you understand that? But when you're calling a man your daddy and your daddy, they don't understand the history, lyricists. They don't understand pick me's. It's pick me's. They want to be chosen. So now we see where pick me culture came from. They just want to be chosen. Well, it came far even in the Bible. They just wanted to be chosen because they only could be with the king for a certain amount of time, you know. So they had to do something to stand out. All right. But that pick me culture is alive in and well. All right. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I was saying, uh, there's a lot of homosexuality um, activity, debauchery that goes in these that goes on in these synagogues of Satan more than we would ever realize. 
y'all these these uh when i listen to that i don't know if y'all remember i was talking about that girl who was married that lady she was a woman that was married to a pastor right and all the things that was going on and he was a whole he was a whole closet homosexual she and so sometimes these men won't be sleeping with you and then sometimes the women are like that too all right especially they narcissists usually they go both ways okay so and they are in the church we got to be able to have this conversation in uh in the church all right because a lot of what is going on gets sweeped under the rug because nobody wants to uh, talk about it and a lot of times the first lady will be a whole beard a whole beard he marries the forever supply for image a lot of times all right but there is a lot all right there's a lot of buffoonery and fakery and foolishness that goes in in the uh the four wall church all right all of these and oh god no she's talking about the church she's talking about the church i'm talking about the four wall church not the bridegroom there is a difference all right so narcissists are for the street they are for the street they believe that they are the prize that man thought he was the prize they'll do anything everything to belittle you and passively coercive uh control you all right and if you don't know any better you can be easily swayed in the church all right all right in the church all right so with uh the signs if somebody if everything is about them that's a good indicator all right that is a good sign all right that that something in the buttermilk ain't clean if they're all about image if they're full of flattery smooth vernacular a tongue that talks that flesh right into a sinful life back up off that thing i don't care if that's your pastor i don't care if that's your bishop all right they have a grandiose persona all right they have to be called by their titles it's all about the titles and the image all right a charming air of seduction i don't care what that man what people say they try to that man has an air now i'm talking about him. he has an air of seduction about him and we as women you know let me let act, go ahead and act like y'all don't know now now okay now i'm getting up off him but you know when a man a, pra, a pastor has a seductive spirit up on him but we try to oh no that's not that no you know silly women we don't want to talk about that thing but your pastor got a hoe <laughs> yeah y'all know he's sitting up there you know on youtube or wherever yeah yeah <laughs> y'all and all the women say, yes yes giving them all yes yes fat throwing pet if they can fit look because all they did was go from the key sweat concert to the church that's all ain't no spirit change wasn't no wasn't no holy spirit what and then he get up there <laughs> yeah yeah let me uh, let's turn to the book of <laughs> james and he all seductive in the pulpit all seductive and the women just didn't because they want to be chosen they want to be chosen there's an air of seduction up on him and women we picked that up we picked that up oh he a playboy passed in the pulpit you know <laughs> but you flattered by it no 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 don't be don't be coming up over here elder no no uh uh, uh. that's my husband even before when i wasn't but you so flattered by it no no you so flattered by it you so flattered by it no you know brothers you know if that sister has a delilah especially looking at you like she ain't even paying attention to the sermon she ain't even getting the word because y'all sitting there playing look look looksies and stuff in the church you said you can't even get the word y'all sitting there passing passing notes look mentally passing mental notes you looking at her body con ain't even ain't heard a word of the sermon you know when somebody got a a seductive uh jezebel spirit on them you just don't care because you want what you want you know it you know it you know it stop acting like you can't see it you can't see that pastor with that seductive uh spirit up on him <laughs> yeah you know yeah you, you know yeah y'all sisters yeah i love my sisters that's why he gotta be acting like he's single because he for the streets he's for the streets and so is she all right yeah that's why they gotta act like they single yeah you know what i ain't lying i ain't lying i ain't lying trying to keep all the trying to keep all the stable you know it you know it. he ain't even attractive he might not even be attractive but he's smooth 
he's smooth with his words. How many of y'all gotten taken by? Oh uh, yeah, I wasn't the only one. Uh, a narcissist that wasn't that wasn't that good looking. All right, but they got that smoothness. Oh, we women, we can see it. Brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about when that woman, oh, she's just seductive. Do you understand me? She's a seductress. All right. And all, all she got to do is just give you a little smile and you just, <laughs> you, you just melting all over the place. Do you understand me? Oh, here's, look, she passing, passing you the note in church, at the church. Here's my number. She Look, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. She done passed you her number. Here you go. And you, girl, you ain't even in the church. This All this is going on. All of this. But we, I can't talk about that, though. I can't talk about that. Take your map off of God's anointed. Well, I'm God's anointed, too. Do you understand me? Passing notes all in the church. Give my number to. Look, and then you know how you had they had them them uh things where the pastor have his uh uh oh because I, I saw it. I grew up around this. You can't tell me no, you can't tell me nothing on that. I saw, I saw it. The women could wait running up there, just like they was running to that stage, running to that stage, they was running to the pastor after church. Look, look, she didn't push the husband over trying to get to the pa pastor and we're running up there with her mountains of glory. Just you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. You uh, look if I told a lie, look if I told a lie, look God correct me. You didn't, we didn't seen it, we didn't we didn't witness this this debauchery and foolishness. All right, so we must wisen up. All right, all right, we we have to have Bible studies and and, and things. We got to be able to call a thing a thing. Do you understand me? We cannot be so enamored with men, with women, with titles, with possessions. All right. All right. And for me, look, in these circles, if you are pompous and you trying to get in Daddy Jake's inner circle, red flag on the play. That's automatic. When I see a pastor and he trying to become the who in the who's who uh, of, of black pastors already, already. That's just me personally. Now, you you have your own. For me personally, when I see that, I already know. I already know. I'm, I'm not going to be listening to him very long. I'm not. Because a lot of times these people are trying to make names for themselves. They're not trying to glorify God. They're trying to make names for themselves. Do you understand me? All right. They are they are not in it for God's glory. They're, not, they're in it for fame and fortune, not for setting captives free, not for gospel, but for ego. And ego is a heck of a drug. All right. So we have pul pulpit, pimps, prophets, preachers, prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. All right, preachers doing it for the gram, and God says, "Come out of her." All right, these these people are trying to immigrate and assimilate and replicate the world, and it is mockery, buffoonery, and clownery. Jesus will be flipping over tables, but you want me to be quiet. You want me to be quiet? No, you be quiet. All right, but I realize if we don't love ourselves. Our, our choices are a reflection of our lives. Don't allow anyone to hide you, treat you like you are a second rate citizen, date you undercover. All right. Now, you you know, you especially when you have kids and things, you want to be discreet with what you do. But uh, if something is hidden, all right, uh, it may be a reason for that. If, you, if somebody is trying to hide you. All right. And these people out here treating you like a snack when you the whole entire meal. All right. Then when they get in their old age, I didn't, I've seen this. They get, they didn't ran the streets. They was for the streets. And then when they get old, they don't want to be alone. The narcissist does not want to be alone in their old age. All right. That's why a lot of parents will try to groom their children to always take care of them because they want to abuse the kids in life. All right. But then when they get old, they want you to take care of them and wipe their behind. All right. But these people are playboys so that they appear that they are on the market while tying up your womb, your bed, your time, your good years and your resources. All right. All right. So we got we got to address our daddy issues. Right. That's a whole smooth talker. Women, we got to address our daddy and our mommy issues. Brother, you got to address those issues as well. Leave these women alone until you can love her right. All right. And love yourselves right. All right, women, we have to have love and respect for ourselves. Stop sacrificing yourself for your man. Do you understand me? And I understand it is a process to learn to love yourself when you have never been loved right. 
all right? But somebody who is breadcrumbing you, all right, stringing you along, non-committal, all right, uh, has babies on the side, dates other people publicly while keeping you private. You're No, they made you a part of their harem. They made you a part of the stable, all right? And, and people, they think that a man, especially a man who thinks that he is the prize, oh, you better get ready, get ready, get ready, all right? Because you about to sign up. You don't even know what you're signing up for. Yeah, he think he he take long to get ready in the bathroom than you. All right, some you might have a problem, sis. You might have a problem, right? Right, Paul. Right, wasn't just Jesus. Paul would have been flipping over tables too. Right, you see how he talked to the, the to the churches. You see how he talked to them. Right. So signs that you need God. Signs that you need to stop dating. You st these look. These are signs, special muscles that you need to stop dating. All right. Your value is in external things, money, men, career, degrees, kids, husband. No, I, that's not your value. That's not where your value comes from. All right. When you don't address your mommy and daddy issues. All right. You got to keep it 100 with your star player. And that's you. You got to keep it real with God. All right. And then women, we have this bad believe a man when he says he doesn't want a relationship. You can't change nobody. I don't care how much you're cooking clean. Yeah, I know. It seems like it paid off. It seems like it paid. It pays off for the women on Instagram. It seems like they it paid off. They lying. They lying. They're not telling you everything. So when somebody tells you, all right, when somebody tells you, all right, uh that they don't want a relationship right now believe them and walk away love yourself oh i just keep talking to him i just keep talking to him he gonna love me no your feelings gonna be hurt because he told you he told you i'm not looking for anything serious believe him why won't you believe him why won't you believe him then, then you get yourself in a hole. You done made up a whole fake relationship in your head. Now your feelings are hurt. Why are your feelings hurt? He told you. I respect it if you look. I can respect anything you tell me up front. It's when you lie to me. All right. It's when you lie to me. All right. But but I believe it. He said you ain't in a relationship, and I'm looking. You know you're looking for one, and don't settle for that. And then take responsibility. As much as people are commenting on. Uh, the proposal, she allowed it. Sister Loretta allowed it. And my heart goes out to her. She allowed it. She allowed him to string her along for 28 long years. Women especially hate accountability. When you uh, hold a woman accountable, she thinks that you are attacking her because a lot of times women hear hear from the lens of their wounds all right it's usually rejection and so when you hold her accountable she feels like you are attacking her so women especially hate accountability we cannot stand it we will blame everyone but one thing about it that mirror is cold-blooded do you hear me all right that mirror is cold-blooded all right so what in you made you stay so long I had to look at that. Even though I was married for two years, I had to say, what in me tolerated this abuse? What in me, what lies did I buy into? And part of it was because of things that I was told in the church. Oh, divorce. Oh, this. Oh, stay and pray. That made me stay in longer. But then uh, on my part, you know, uh, I was conditioned. I didn't know how to love myself. So I had to, I had to go back and, and figure all that out. God had to show me where my wounds were. All right. And some women, they pour so much in a man too. You pour so much into a relationship. You think that staying, praying, cooking, cleaning, being his mama, being her daddy will, will help them to see your worth. Uh-uh. If they don't see their worth, if you don't see their worth, all right, others won't see your worth either. That's just how it works. So if people are treating you like crap, how are you treating yourself? Oh, did everybody just walk all over me? How are you treating yourself? All right. People, people respect who they cannot disrespect. Do you allow others to disrespect you? Do you hold yourself 
Do you hold your head up high? Do you allow, do, do you love yourself? People do to you what you allow them to do. People do to you how you treat yourself. All right. Do you understand that? And then for those, if some people are just so brazen, they'll do it anyway. You just let them go. You, you just let them go. So why is your tolerance for abuse so high? Why do you stay so long? Why is it okay for people to mistreat you and you think it's okay to stay in a relationship? Why do you think it's okay for people to hide you? Why do you think it's okay to play second uh, fiddle to someone? Why do you think that that's okay? Was that modeled to you? All right. Is there some kind of belief in your head? You have to get to the root of that thing. Do you understand me? And then let me address. Let me address my sisters because I love you. Women want to win at all costs, all right? A lot of times, especially unhealed women, they want to heal all at all costs, all right? Some want to win the narcissist just to prove to the other women in the stable that they won, <laughs> that they are the bottom or the top or the queen or the this or the that. See, I told you, he is mine. Ugh. And they think that they are getting the prize. Ah, oh, my sisters, some women, some brothers just want to prove to their ego that they can get you. Do you understand that? They don't love you. They like, they want to, it's a notch in their belt and brothers, women are the same way. Some women, they just flirty. They just flirt. They don't really want you. They just, they just like the idea of getting your attention. Do you understand that? She don't really want you. She might want your resources. She, a lot of them don't really want you. Some of them. Now, some of them really want you for your personality. But the more you heal, the more all of us heal, the more these people will be able to be weeded out. All right. But some people just want to win at all costs. All right. They, they don't care. All right. You're going to realize sooner or later that if you have, if you need them, they're not going to be there for you. Those type people get sick, get sick. Let something happen to you and see what and see how they do you. Oh, those type of people will be out of there quick and soon. All right. And there's nothing worse than an old fool. An old fool. Lord, don't let me be an old fool. See, I was a fool when I was young. I was young. I didn't know no better. Don't let me be an old fool. Do you hear me? Ain't nothing worse. All them silly old women running up to the stage. Wasn't even young women. See that, that they was see them. Those are the women that was in the stable. See these these they, that's the women that's in the stable because they want to be chosen. They want to be chosen by a pimp in the pulpit. Do you understand me? They just want to be chosen. When you are old fool, you ain't learned no lessons. You haven't learned any lessons. Nothing. You still doing the same thing at forty that you was doing at thirty that you was doing at 20, you still doing the same thing, playing the same games, letting the same narcissist run game on you. Still, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm here. I mean, I'm, look, don't let a pimp run game on you. A narcissistic pimp, whether in the pulpit or not, I'm here to tell you. All right, I'm here to tell you. Don't, ain't nothing worse than being an old fool. You understand me? Yeah, you gotta look. That mirror is cold blooded, Shannon. That mirror is cold blooded. No, husband, I don't want to be an old fool. I don't want to be an old fool. And then another sign, you gotta put God in His rightful place. All right, you have to put God in His rightful place. Do you understand? An educated fool to oh degree. See, now we have women and men who have degrees, and we'll get game ran on them by a, a narcissist who ain't passed elementary school do you understand me i didn't see it i have seen i especially women i have seen women with phds and mbas get game ran on them by a narcissist who didn't finish middle school so that's even worse that will make you feel worse when you you know but see degrees they think degrees uh mean something degrees doesn't mean that you're really educated. 
Uh, by this world standard, it does. But yeah, you are educated man. You will have problems. Look, because that was me. Look, you'll have problems. Look, forgiving yourself because you're going to be like, dang, why did not I know? Why didn't you know? Because a lot of times you was conditioned and you're not dealing with your issues. So you thought that having degree, ask me how I know, you thought that having success in degrees would help you. No, you just became an educated fool. You're still a fool if you don't deal with the root of that thing. Do you understand me? Do you understand? Girl, it's right, but it's tight, ain't it? Ain't it, Trisha? It's right. Yes. How many women get finessed? Yes. Out here getting finessed by a pimp in the pulpit. Can't recognize because they are silly women getting, look, old school, old fool from the old school. That's exactly what it is. Old school, old fool from the old school. See, one thing about it, see, I'm a movie, but I watch, that's, I watch people. Look, I study things. I don't watch people like that, but I study, like, when I see movies and stuff like that, and maybe, I don't know, maybe the way I was brought up, no, nah, I saw some things. I saw some things. I saw how how men would do things, and that, that didn't stop me from being in a narcissistic relationship. The spirit was already there. The seed was already there. All it took is the right one to come along. Do you understand me? All right? So, yeah, if, if you don't know these things, you'll get taken. You're an old fool. So if you're still doing the things at 40 that you was doing at 20, you're still in the club, you're an old fool. You, you the, you're going to be the old fool in the club thinking they cool. Hey, hey, if that's your thing, that's your thing. That, that's your thing. Yes. Desperate for attention. Yes. So we got to heal that. And that's not to make anybody feel shameful because that was me. All right. So I just had to wise up. I had to take inventory of where I was and who I wanted to be. So write down who you, where you are now and who, where you want to be. Put that on your mirror. I want to be this type of woman. I want to be this type of man. I want to be this. And then you strive for that every day. You strive for that because you have to have some type of marker in your mind. Oh, I want to be a woman who is a, a woman of standard. Then when a, when a brother call and try to, to call you at a 11, 12 o'clock at night, you tell him to call you back or you don't answer your phone. You set the tone. You set the standards. All right. But some of you don't have standards because you you um, you don't love yourself and you want to you want to do things to pacify them so that they don't go away. But have standards. He'll respect that. He'll respect you more, sister. Don't let him be calling you at all times of the morning and the night. You don't have any respect for yourself a lot of times. All right. I want to be I want to be there for him anytime. Of night. No, set a standard. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. Hold them. Hold Hold them to a standard. Do you understand me? Hold them to a standard. Hold them to a standard. But you got to first hold yourself to a standard. Ain't no shame. Ain't no shame. We just learning. We just learning. We just here learning. If that's you right now, don't even feel bad about it, sweetheart. We just going to do better. We going to do better. No, we, we letting this go. But it needs to sting a little bit because you need to know. We don't want you getting taken by an old fool or being an old fool. All right, I'm getting taken by a pimp in the pulpit because a lot of narcissists are pimps. They, they have that pimp spirit, that narcissistic Jezebel spirit. All right, and watch out for men that cater and pander to women. Enough said. All right, but a lot of times there's a spirit of rejection. You got to uh, you gotta deal with that. You got to deal with that. All right, when people reject other um if you uh, reject yourself, you know, that you that's tough. I had a spirit of rejection uh, when I was going through this. God showed me that. All right. You got to deal with that rejection. You got to deal with that. You got to deal with that ab abandonment issues, those mommy and daddy issues. All right. Because rejected people reject God. Do you understand that? Whatever. That's why I told you I watch people. I watch what they say. People be thinking they fooling you. You ain't fooling me. All right. Whatever your relationship with, with God is, that's how you treat other people. Do you understand me? You love God. You'll love others. All right. You throw temper tantrum with God. You mad at God. You hate God. You'll throw a temper tantrum with me. You'll give me the silent treatment for things that I don't even know about. Do you understand me? You hate God. You hate others. You hate yourself. You hate other men and women. Do you understand that your relationship with God and yourself sets the tone for all other relationships? You sleep around. You're a harlot to God. Do you understand me? You will play the harlot to God. All right. Ask me how I know you fornicating, you sleeping, whatever you'll play the you you're playing the harlot to God. God don't play with that. 
God had to smack me up about that. He let me run into a narcissist, all right, for me to awaken. And I thank him for that because that woke me up. All right. The same way that I was doing God is what the narcissist did to me. Do you understand? We don't want to talk about that, though. We just want to talk about the narcissist. All right. All right. So you too, like I said in my other message, until you are born again, you will continue on in sinful, ungodly relationships. But when you have that awakening, when you come to God for real, you won't even play with that thing. All right. You'll see the narcissist and you'll see that narcissist in the spirit for who they really are. If you could see that narcissist in the spirit for who they really are, you would have your, you would be a runner and a track star. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? But when you don't know God, you know religion, you know how to put on your, your you know, you know how to hem and haul. Like I said in my other messages, as long as you know how to hem and haul, you'll get the women. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? They know what to say. They know what to do. They know how to arouse the crowd. Don't you understand me? They know how to get you to bring all your tithes, your, their tithes and offerings so that they can meet their quota. Do you understand that? So you be you give by the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit tells you to give and to do. Do you understand me? We take care of the poor and the widow. Do you understand me? All right. We give to those in need. All right. Do you understand me? All right. And you, you sow as God shows you to, but it should all be given by the power of the Holy Spirit. So all you got to do is watch. People that love this world, all right, people that don't love God truly, all right, they'll tell you, they'll tell you, and I know because I was one of them, I didn't know God truly, all right, I, I was a people pleaser, and I wanted people's approval more than I wanted God's approval, but when I was born again, I don't care what you think about me, do you understand me, because only God has already validated me, do you understand me? And until you get to that point where you know you are beautiful, where you know you are handsome, where God has already validated you, you will seek validation and career and money and things and men and women and in this world and an idolatry and in celebrities and idols. And you will be in bed with this world. All right. People in love with this world and these celebrity idols are in bed with Babylon. They are in adultery and idolatry against God and they will not see heaven. That is God's word. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. So don't be silly women getting led astray. Don't be led astray by pimps in the pulpit. All right, don't allow, don't do it to yourself. Do you understand me? Don't you understand me? Because a pimp in distress will put you on the whole stroll. Do you understand me? And you don't want that. You don't want somebody using you up. Do you understand me? Using up all your goodness. All right, no, you got to be able to recognize the signs. Hallelujah. So that's all I have. Let me see. Yes. Hey, brother, you in here? Yes. We just talked, we talking about pimps in the pulpit. What else we talk about, y'all? Pimps in the pulpit, uh, recognizing these things. We had a conversation earlier about uh, um, uh, uh, Brother Jones, all right, Bishop Jones, all right. So absolutely, God has already validated you. I already validated you, amen. Anyone condemns you for not tithing is a prophet, prophet. Tithe was never money. It didn't come into the New Testament. Jesus never changed the tithe from crops and grain to money, amen. Uh, the worst thing that happened to me, but the greatest thing at the same time, it was, it was, that is a good way to put it. It was the worst thing that has happened to me, but it turned to be the best thing because it brought me into repentance. All right. God, it, it changed my heart. And this is why God chastises us. All right. This is why he allows us to sow or to reap what we sow. All right. It is because he loves us enough to discipline us, to get out of these situations and to put, take the narcissist, take the pimp and the pre whoever it is, take them out of God's place and put them in. And once you do that, you'll be able to discern a wolf in sheep's clothing. All right. You, you'll start to see the signs. Do you hear me? And not everybody is like this. No. All right. But a little leaven leavens the whole lump. All right. So we don't want to be that. We don't want to do that. All right. Um, 
you said in one of your videos being with a narc or a toxic person is the tip of the iceberg got it right that is an, if you are in a narcissistic relationship that is an indicator your check engine light is on do you understand me your check light is on just like in your car that is an in, that is a symptom that is an indicator that something is amiss in your life and god has allowed that narcissist to come into your life all right has allowed it that's not his perfect will but that is your permissive will because you came into agreement with it so now that you've come into agreement with it now that you have the knowledge now when you're ready you ask god to help you get up out of that thing because it's going to take the grace of god and this is the thing i keep saying this about a jezebelic spirit jezebel was a ruling principality she was a queen do you understand me so when a spirit is a ruling and reigning spirit there are some things that only God can deliver you from. Do you understand me? When you have a Leviathan spirit, these are strong holes. These are strong man spirits. These are strong things. All right. So Jezebel was a ruling and a reigning spirit. So a lot of times it will take the hand of God to help you get out of that situation. All right. When you've been so tied with them, when you've been shackled to them, do you understand me? But it takes you saying, God, this is not the way that I want to live. I want more for myself, Heavenly Father. I want to, my will be not, not my will be done. Didn't we say the prayer the other day? Thy will be done. So if you want to stay with the narcissist, God will allow you to do that. But if you want to be free from that, God will deliver you. Look, just like in this situation, God will let you stay in a 28 year, be a 28 year girlfriend on the side. If you want to do that, if you want to do that for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30, however long you want to do that, God will allow you to do that a lot of times, all right, or sometimes, depending on the situation, all right? None of us really know the ways of God, but a lot of times he'll, he'll do that because that's your free will, do you understand me? But if you want to get up out of that thing, all right, you got to make up in your mind that this, look, Look, some may, whatever God your will is, get me out of this situation, move according to your will, all right? And then he'll begin working, but you came into agreement with that thing. Do you understand that? So now, all right, you have to revoke the, the, the demons' uh, access to you. Demons have are always looking for legal rights. And a lot of times demons were legalized through our bloodlines, through our families, through curses, you can do what you want to do. You can date who you want to date. Do you understand me? But it has consequences. It has consequences. So no more out here just living reckless, all right? Hooking up with a narcissistic pimp in the pulpit, all right? Whatever, your, whatever the case is, all right? It has consequences, all right? Hooking yourself up to a narcissistic Jezebel has consequences, but the blood of Jesus saves. Do you hear me? You are not past redemption as long as you have air in your body, all right? God can restore you. Christ is a restorer, like I always say. He is a repair of the breach. So if you're feeling sorry for yourself, no, 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 no. No, don't do that to yourself, all right? Repent and get on up. You get knocked down nine times, get up 10. Do you understand me? You have the power. Look, and if you haven't been born again, if you don't have God's Holy Spirit in you, this is the time. Don't play with that thing. Oh, I need a little bit more time. I'm not through sleeping with Jeffrey, well, or Jennifer, or whoever her name is. Look, don't play with this thing. You don't know when you're going to take your last breath. Do you understand me? And you don't want to die in that sin. So they don't want to tell you to die in that sin where you think you're going. Do you understand that? So, so no, nobody that loves God keeps on sinning. Do you understand me? Now we may, we're going to sin as long as we're in this flesh, but if you living a lifestyle of flesh, all right, you living a lifestyle according to the flesh, you're going to die right by that flesh. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. God don't want you in that thing like that. God has better. God has better than you paying a second rate uh, girlfriend or boyfriend to somebody. Cry out to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God is a way maker. Yes, narcissist relationship is basically training these narcs on the macro level. If we can't break away from the narcissist, how can you deal? Right. Say that, brother. This is warm up. <laughs> this is warm up. All right. We're, we're dealing. You dealt with the narcissist. That was your awakening to what is really going on in this world. All right. How are you going to how are you going to withstand the Antichrist? The Antichrist is coming, doing sign uh, wonders. All right. They're coming, doing things that look like 
it, it's from God in so many, the very elect will be deceived. Do you understand me or can be deceived? So the church, if you look at it, the church is in bed, the four wall church, not, not the, the remnant, not the body of Christ, but the four wall church is in bed with Babylon and Babylon is going to fall and you will be bowing down. This is bigger than the narcissist. This is bigger than that. This is preparation for the antichrist. And if you can't discern a low level sheep or a low level wolf, all right, how will you discern when the antichrist comes? How will we discern? Do you understand that? This is why this thing is not a game. It's not a game to me. This is real life. This is real life stuff and people take it so seriously. And this is why you cannot make a mockery of God. Do you understand me in his church? God loves it, but it's so much foolery and fakeness and phoniness going and buffoonery and debauchery going on in these buildings and God is not here for it. Do you understand me? And if you attend the circus, you, they'll make you a clown. Do you understand me? This thing ain't no game. I know the world wants to distract you. This is a distraction. The world wants to distract you from what's to come. This is real out here on this battlefield. If you haven't realized that you are on a battlefield and you still crying about a daggone narcissistic demon, it's game time. Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to sting. It's going to be all of that. Do you understand me? But you're in a war and, you, and weak soldiers get killed on the battlefield. Do you understand me? If you are a weak, docile, passive, all right, passive, uh, enabling, flying monkey, all right, if you'll do it for a man in the pulpit, you'll do it for the Antichrist and you'll be bowing and your children will be bowing and we don't want that. It's game time. Get in your word, get in your word. And I say, repent. I'm not saying that to bring judgment or condemnation. I'm telling you that because time is drawing near and God wants his people to be saved. Everybody is not God's child. Do you understand me? If you keep on sitting, you make yourself an enemy of God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be an enemy of God. That's why I'll say what he wants me to say. I don't care if it's popular. I don't care who likes it and who doesn't like it. If God tells me to, tells me to say it, I'm going to say it no matter if you like it or not. Do you understand me? And that's the boldness that God is looking for in his apostles, in his teachers, in his evangelists, in his preachers, in his fivefold ministry. And if you love men more than you love God, if you love mother and father more than you love God, you are not fit for the kingdom and the four wall church and the bridegroom are two totally different they are totally different do you understand me now should they be that should they be synonymous yes but you have a lot of people who attend church every sunday they post scripture on their on their uh instagram and on their facebook page they are religious they wrap their heads they don't wear whatever it is that you into and they feel like because they do these things they are holy no 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 all right all right god sanctifies us the blood of jesus uh, and it is a process, all right? So don't beat yourself up if you're not there, but you need to be getting there, all right? You need to be getting there, all right? This, this world is full of distractions. You need to be getting there, hallelujah. God is not playing with this thing. Time is short, hallelujah. Yeah, no more being a, pun a punching bag. No, you have uh, God's uh, glory inside of you. If you are born again, God does not want you being somebody else's punching bag. Say goodbye to Ahab. You are not an Ahab. That's the only way you can be in a narcissistic relationship if you are not walking in God's authority, the authority that God has given you through the blood of Jesus. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Don't take revenge. No, the rotten fruit fall always fall by itself. Amen, Car uh, Carolyn. No, don't do not do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do you hear me? No, no, no. God will handle it. Let God handle your light work. And look, look, when I see somebody and they do me wrong, I told you. I just be like, ooh, 
you about to get it you about to get it god have mercy on your soul i got into a point where i where i pray for people when they do me wrong because god I, one thing about it i know god at his word now and when god say he will avenge your enemies <laughs> he is not playing with that thing all right and sometimes god i told you i don't even want to see it some people want to see their enemies done wrong. i don't i don't want no parts of that because i know god is not a liar and then if you walking you walking with god god will take care of your enemies do you hear me and he will rain down fire up on their heads so you don't even have to worry about getting them back if you get them back now you're bringing yourself into judgment you're bringing your you're making yourself an enemy of god you don't forgive them you're holding them in judgment then then you're holding them in judgment you're being the judge jury and executioner do you understand me so if you got your hand on it why does god need to avenge you you've you've already given them your your justice so let god handle that thing right please don't play with it it's dangerous god is seeking true worshiper right it's bigger than nino brown it's bigger than nino brown yes it is i think i put keisha back in here where is keisha where is keisha look rock a bye baby y'all know I, I love me some keisha i ain't gonna lie i ain't been saved all my life all right i have not i have not you religious keyboard warriors i have not all right all right but anyway uh let me see then we get out of here too late if you die in that sin lord have mercy right that's why we can't play with this thing and see that's the danger that's the danger of a show like preachers of la it it that was the danger of that it taught people that they could live however they wanted to and they could have cheat on their wives and you know not that all of them was doing that dietrich was the one that was doing that but um and I pray he's changed, but uh, it, it just showed people that you can be flashy, you can live how you want to, and God will bless it. You know, God, God, God will do it. And and that thing was not of God. All right. And so this is why people think it made a mockery out of God's church and God's true men, uh, uh, pastors, bishops, evangelists. It made a mockery of that. And, and, and it didn't bring God any glory. It, it brought man. It brought man glory. All right, and God wasn't God ain't in that thing like that. That's probably why it went off. Thank you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Return that seed to you over and abundantly. Hallelujah. 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 Brother, I ain't been saved. Look, saved but not saw. So I'm, so I'm gonna put this on the website soon. Okay. All right. This this is for the chain breaker family. And it has my low uh just a little logo on the back. But uh yeah, saved but not saw. I'm tired of weak, weak, docile uh phony fake christians it gives it gives us real warriors a bad name all right it gives god's true um god's true fivefold ministry a bad name when uh you know they want to integrate with the world no god said come out of this world this world about to be look the united states oh, this is about to fall y'all yeah cotton me all that it's gonna fall all right it, it that's babylon it's gonna fall all right and if we're if we're in this world system you got to be led by the Holy Spirit to survive this thing. Do you understand me? All right. So we don't want to get, we don't want to get led astray. We want to be in that number. All right. And only those who endure into the end will make it. That's all of us. That's me. That's why I take this thing to heart. I take this thing seriously. And I pray that I always have this fire for God. Like I know what it is to live raggedy and reckless uh-uh you couldn't pay you couldn't pay me bill gates money do you hear me you couldn't pay me bill gates money to go back you couldn't pay me oprah money you couldn't pay me jay-z and beyonce money you couldn't pay me none of that to go back to where i was you couldn't pay me but some people you could pay them they go back in a heartbeat not me not me no sir in my rick ross voice no sir not me you mm -mm, mm -mm. i remember what that looked like in, on the inside no you silver and gold no give me jesus do you hear me and i ain't even playing with oh she just so don't get she just so no i'm real about mine boo i'm real about mine i ain't gonna tell you i i'm not even playing with that thing right 
one and done season for that. And but they had they had some preachers of LA, Detroit. What else did they have? They had Atlanta. But that one, I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. That was it. That was it. Did that thing bring God glory? I, I don't know. I don't know. Girl, probably another 28 years. He'd be anyway. Let me be quiet. Let me see when I start talking like this. I gotta get off because I know it's time to get off. These experiences have definitely made us stronger. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. You can't put a price on a clean conscience, right? Where you know you're living for God. You know what I mean? Not that I get it, I don't get it right. I don't get it right all the time, you know, just like, you know, in the same mercy, I want God to show me. I want him to extend to Bishop Jones and, and other people, but and, and you as well. You know what I mean? So but we have to be able to tell one another the truth in love. You understand me? You email me. You talking like you got some sense and I'm doing something. I don't mind that. If you come at me slick, it's just don't come at me slick mouth. Don't come at me slick mouth. Don't do that to yourself. Don't because I'm just going to delete it. Don't come at me sideways. But if you come at me in love. You come at me, you know, and make sure your house is clean. You make sure yours, because I'm checking the facts. Don't come over. Your house ain't clean. Your house ain't clean, because I'm look. I'm going to examine that fruit. I look at people, they bleed comments, and I go over to their page, and they got all kind of, like, you don't get your raggedy living self off my page, and you got the nerve to talk to me about some makeup, and yo, what is this? Look, what is raggedy, you raggedy witch? Anyway, let me go before I start talking crazy. All right. Um, look, ID blast from Iraq or Narbar. My only question is, what is the next fight to Ku Kuwait? Right. I stopped watching. Right. And y'all know, look, I talk a lot about because I've watched it a lot when, when I wouldn't say, but look, I can't, I can't look. I barely watch TV now. So I, I don't, I don't have time for it a lot of times. Um, I do use like my DVR for some things, but a lot of times it's usually for research or something like that. I got to clean that thing right on up, right? Right on up, right on up. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, let me say a prayer and let's get out of here. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for this conversation, Lord. Thank you um, uh, for just being here with us, Heavenly Father. Lord, I repent of my sins made by commission and omission, Heavenly Father. I pray that this conversation was pleasing to you. I pray that uh, somebody got a word out of it, Lord, that some knowledge was shared and awareness of, of what is going on. Lord, it's not all good. This world is not all good. The church is not all good, but you are coming back for our spotless bride, Lord. You want us cleaned up, and in order to clean things up, Lord, we must begin to have hard conversations, even if it even if it's uh is it makes us uncomfortable, Lord. But but you said, Lord, Jesus said, Lord, I didn't come to bring peace, I came with a sword, Heavenly Father. So the truth is going to cut, it's going to come big, but ultimately it sets us free, Heavenly Father. Father, and that's what we want to be. We want to be free. We want to be delivered uh, from our sins, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the on the cross for our sins. Thank you for a Savior, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for, for the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our comforter, Heavenly Father, who shows us when we're not right, when we're not living right, when we're not treating one another right, Heavenly Father. Lord, convict us all the more, Lord. If we're not doing our brother and sister right help us to go to them if we can heavenly father help us to go to them and and, and make that thing right heavenly father even before we pray even before we cry out to you heavenly father so lord we thank you lord we lift uh, 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 the, uh, 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 Bishop, uh, uh, Noel and Loretta, we lift them up in your prayer and in prayer, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that it is a union from you, Heavenly Father. And we pray for other marriages, other relationships, even while people are in singlehood, Heavenly Father. Lord, because we know the family is your design, Heavenly Father. That was, that is your institution. And Satan wants to do everything that he can to make a mockery out of marriage. To to make a mockery out of the church, to make a mockery out of families, Heavenly Father. And we bind up those spirits in the name of Jesus. We bind up that mindset, Heavenly Father. So Lord, help us to be kingdom citizens. And
and kingdom minded heavenly father in the name of jesus lord lord we plead the blood of jesus over each and every one that is watching this video that is in agreement heavenly father we ask for your protection heavenly father and your provision and your plans in our life to go forward to be birthed lord for those who are truly in pain heavenly father those who feel convicted by this message by my words which are really your words heavenly father i lift them up lord we lift them up lord you know the situations in which we're going through and we're all going through things lord we're all going through things in one way or another lord we're all healing from some sort of pain heavenly father we all have things that we need to address so uncover them lord uncover them lord we don't no longer do we want to live in shame no longer that shame isn't yours sister that shame isn't yours brother let god use it for his glory let him use your story to turn it into a testimony let him use your mess to turn it into a message hallelujah you never use perfect people so we're not looking for bishops or pastors anybody to be perfect but you have raised up a standard heavenly father you have given us the standard on how we're supposed to live and marry and treat and do and, and how to treat one another heavenly father so we thank you lord and we ask lord for just uh healing healing up on this live healing up on people who will watch the replay heavenly father healing lord because you are jehovah Rapha. you are a healer lord so we thank you for your healing power lord you love the broken hearted lord bind up their wounds lord lord we ask that you watch over our children heavenly father let us raise up children who know you have us raise up children in the way that they should go so when they are old they do not report uh depart from it heavenly father lord we thank you help us to be kingdom women and kingdom men who do things for the glory of you for the glory of christ for the glory of heaven heavenly father let our words be seasoned lord let us put away the appearances of evil heavenly father let us lord just love on you and just thank you abba because we couldn't we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you because the enemy wanted to sift us out like wheat but you said not so you said not so and because you spoke those words because of your plan we are here and now there are there is healing to do there is work to do heavenly father so let us put our hands to the plow lord let us build a, a, a kingdom businesses let us have kingdom marriages lord kingdom family let us be kingdom minded let us come out of this world and into the kingdom of heaven hallelujah hallelujah in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you father thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus there's none like you it's just none like you it's nobody like you forgive us for idolatry forgive us for putting someone in your place lord forgive us for staying too long lord forgive us lord forgive us lord forgive our ancestors lord we come out of agreement with generational uh pathology heavenly father we forgive those who hurt us lord thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus all right y'all uh for those god is so good god is so good god is so good i never want to quench the spirit god is so good god is so good hallelujah hallelujah y'all make sure y'all follow my husband i see the street preachers in here as well follow those channels all right follow them joy telsha t on mpd keep telsha in your prayers hallelujah um this saturday will be my uh birthday brunch blessings and doing no contact like a boss all right i won't be live uh i'll be i won't be live on saturday i'll be on zoom and then next week i'm, I'm taking a break all right <laughs> as god unless god tell me to get up on here but i don't plan on it all right i don't plan on then if you have questions you can always ask your question on wizio the newsletter will go out today i think if it hasn't already all right so check it out and uh sign up there's still seats so sign up all right if you if that is your um if you want to join a community of faith-based women do you understand me who are breaking chains 
who are breaking strongholds, who are combating this thing, who are building up the kingdom of heaven, who are armoring up. Come on over. Come on over. Come on in there. All right. Go to my website for more information. All right. All right. All right. I see we got a bot. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. I hope you got your uh your uh order too. Yes. Y'all email me when I send y'all something. Email me. Let me know what you got. Let me know if you like it. Let me know. All right. Do me. Uh, make sure you fill out a, a, a Google review. You can just go in there and hit stars or whatever your comment is. All right. All right. That's that. That's another way to sew. OK. All right, y'all. I will see y'all next time. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.